Hey there, in this video we're going to be taking a look at my shop-made radius jig or fixture. Uh, so if you're new to guitars and bass, you might not realise that your fretboard surface isn't actually flat uh, from one side to the other, so from bass to treble side. It actually is convex instead, and this is what we refer to as the radius of the fretboard. And this can vary from anywhere between a seven and a quarter inch radius up to normally about a 20 inch radius. There are exceptions where you can go even flatter than that, uh, but there's kind of in that general range is the norm. Uh, so the traditional way of cutting this radius would be to use sanding blocks like this one here. And you can see we've got the convex, or it's this way, it's concave surface, uh, where the sandpaper would be stuck on here. And then you'd sand and sand until this shape had transferred onto the fretboard. And that obviously takes quite a long time. Uh, so if you can avoid doing that, so much the better. And that's what this jig does. So the jig I'm going to show you today cuts this radius into the fretboard without lots and lots of sanding and it greatly reduces the amount of time spent on the radius. Uh, so that's what we're going to have a look at now. Let's get started. So here's the jig. So I built this about 10 years ago now. Uh, before that, because I was building for at least six years before that, I was using sanding blocks to cut the radius. Uh, and that obviously takes a lot of time. So I can do this in probably a tenth of the time that you can from sanding them. Uh, so if you've got a few builds to go do, it's well worth building one of these and taking the time to do it. Uh, you can buy these nowadays, uh, they're a completely different design to mine, um, but back then, 10 years ago, there was nothing available to buy, so you had to make your own. And that still makes a good option to build your own nowadays, because it'll save you a lot of money, because the shop-bought ones are fairly expensive, whereas this can be built for very little. Uh, so we've got some 3 quarter inch ply at the bottom, and these are 3 quarter inch MDF here, um, but you can all use ply for this as well. And then we've got some thinner ply here, about half an inch. And then this section here is actually removable. Um, so if I was going to do a bolt-on neck, for example, with the fretboard attached, I would take this off and then it sits a bit lower. Uh, but today we're going to be using this to cut fretboards, which aren't already glued to a neck. So we've got this little section here to raise it up to bring it to the proper level. And at the end is our chosen radius. So we're doing a 10 inch radius today. Uh, but these end pieces can be removed. Uh, so you can cut any radius you want. So I've got multiple different ones. There's a 14 one here, and then I've got basically every number, and these are all made by myself as well, and they're obviously very simple to make, and don't take long. So you can also do compound radiuses with it as well, so you could have a 10 inch at this one, and a 16 at the other, or, you know, any number you like, and it'll work for that as well. So it's very versatile, and it saves a lot of time. Uh, I'll just demonstrate how it works now. So now you can see I've got the other pieces of the jig in place. I've got these rails here which are attached to a block of wood on either end. And these are just one inch mild steel tubes. And they're attached in there, really tight fitting. So these are never gonna come loose. And these of course sit on these shaped pieces which I showed you before. And you can see how I attach these. I've got a couple of screws down there, which go into this post here, just to save screwing into plywood, which doesn't work very well. So I've got them screwing into a piece of pine here. Um, if I was gonna build this jig again, I'd probably have threaded inserts in here because uh, these screws have to come in and out a lot of times, so you could end up with stripped threads, but it hasn't happened yet. And then the other piece to the jig is the carriage, which sits on top of these railings. And you can see it's got cutouts to fit over the tubes there. And then the router will sit in this here. I have a dedicated router just for this, uh, so save having to swap them over all the time. So this is just a cheap laminate trimmer, which sits in this here, which is part of the router there. And then this carriage will slide up the rails like that with the router on, cutting the radius as it goes. And then when we get to the end, we can move the tubes across like this, and then make a pass all the way back down the other way, and with the router on again, and that will cut the next pass of it. So each time we move it along this curved section, it'll be cutting more of the radius this direction, and then we'll go one direction, uh, say the base side, and then we'll move back to the middle and go to the treble side. And when I set the depth of the router, I want it so it's just touching the very tip of the, or the apex of the radius, uh, so it's not taking off too much material. And then as it moves down, it'll obviously be taking off more and more material as it gets to the edge. So this jig has been through a number of modifications over the years, and you can see some evidence of this on the carriage, because uh, I used to have a ordinary plunge router which would sit in this carriage, and it was just a friction fit, so it needed to be a tight fit. And that's what these pieces of oak are about, uh, so they would hold the router in place. Um, before that I had a different router and it was just the edges of the pine, so this was originally built to a different router. And then I changed the router and then these pieces of oak were added. Uh, and then eventually I settled on the laminate trimmer, 
uh, because this could be just bolted through the base of the carriage and it gives it a nice secure seat. Uh, this jig also used to be about twice the size as well. I used to have a much bigger base and end pieces on it, um, but then I've kind of narrowed it down to the bare minimum I'll ever need, um, but which is still allows me to cut basically any fretboard I'll ever need to do. I've cut a 41 inch scale uh, six string base on this before and it was big enough for that. So if it's big enough for that, it's going to be big enough for just about anything I'm ever going to do. And if you think about building something like this yourself, uh, the width from there to there, so the width of the whole thing is about 325 millimeters, and the length here is about 930, or nearly 37 inches, 36 and a half inches. Uh, and that's, like I said, that's been perfect for me. So I've got it down to the bare minimum it can be. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how this works. I'm now going to show it in action. So I'm going to attach a fretboard to the bed here. You could either use double-sided tape or the masking tape and super glue to it, which is what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to show you it in action. So these are the two fretboards which we're going to be working on today. So this is a Witchlight one, uh, which is a 30 inch scale. Uh, it's actually got 24 frets at the moment, uh, but we only need 20. So this is just a bit of extra down here, which will be cut off later. And this is a Indian Ebony board, uh, which is 32 inch medium scale. And again, we've got a little bit of extra. This one's only got 20 frets on it. Uh, but we've got a bit of extra here to test the depth of the router on there. Yeah, so that allows us to make sure we're cutting to the right depth before we go and cut actually into the main area of the fretboard. Uh, they're both going to have a 10 inch radius, so we don't need to swap out end pieces at all. But we're ready to go on those. So I've now got the fretboard attached to the bed uh, using the masking tape and super glue to it. And you can see I've got a central line drawn on the fretboard. And it's important that this lines up with the central line on the jig. I can see the central line goes all the way up there and it lines up with this one too on the end piece. As that's important as well, you've got to have these central lines all lining up to make sure everything is nice and even. And it's the same at the other end. See that's lining up down there as well. So now we're ready to cut. So here's the router I'm using. Uh, this is just a laminate trimmer, like I mentioned earlier, inexpensive one. Um, and I'm just using a three quarter inch bearing guided cutter. It doesn't need a bearing at all. This is just because it's a good router bit, which is why I'm using it. Um, so this bearing isn't doing anything. Uh, you could also use a surfacing bit and you'd probably have slightly better results and a cleaner finish if you're doing that. Uh, I just use this bit because I like it and I know it's a good quality one and I get a good cut from it. Um, but you can obviously experiment with the different bit that you use. Um, but I like this one. I said, I've had this bit dedicated to this job for a long time and I know it does a good job. You want to use a good sharp bit because um, otherwise you can end up getting tear out across the edges of the fretboard. Um, that's why I always allow a little bit of extra on here as well. And why also why I cut the fretboard radius when it's still square rather than tapered. Because uh, you can get some kind of blowout at the edges and then you end up splinters across the edge of your fretboard. Uh, which obviously doesn't look very good. So I've now set the depth on the router and I've set this so it just touches the top of the radius here. Uh, if you set it too deep you'll lose more material than you want to and it will also make the router work harder and you more chance of getting problems with tear out and things like that. Uh, so it's best just to set it at the very minimum so that means you still cut the whole radius you're not leaving anywhere out uh, but you're not you know making things difficult for yourself. So we're going to cut now. So as you can see, it makes a ton of mess, all this, uh, but you can't really do much about that because you can't add dust extraction to it really because it's just going to be another thing to get in the way of it going backwards and forwards. Uh, but you can see it leaves a really good result. We've got a nice even radius on the same material on this corner as this corner and the same at the other end as well. And it's dead flat as well. And you can see the sort of finish it leaves. It'll obviously need sanding after, but it's, you know, it hard, hardly any sanding compared to what it would be if we were sanding in the whole radius because in that case then you're sanding the shape rather than just sanding to remove defects like will be on this. So now we're moving on to the rosewood board and it's just the same process, uh, just a different board. So 
now that is the Wizwood one done also. Uh, so you can see the Wizwood cut's actually a little bit cleaner than the witch light does, uh, just because it's a natural material. Um, I think because it's not black as well, it doesn't show the line so much. Uh, but that's come out really nicely, just like the other one. Uh, so this just needs sanding now, and then they can be put to use. Uh, so this is a big time saver, because I've done these both boards in like a few minutes, and it would have taken hours by sanding. So I've now given these boards a rough trim, uh, so they roughly follow the taper of the next they're going on. Uh, I'm going to leave this video here now. I'm not going to do any of the sanding on these fretboards. Uh, I'm actually going to do the sanding on these once they're glued to the next, which they're going on. And um, there's obviously not going to be a huge amount either because the radius is already there. So it's just a case of removing these marks, which the router has left. So I can probably start off at something like 120 grit, and it won't take long at all to get these to a nice surface. That's all for this one. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's been useful. If it has, please don't forget to leave me a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please do subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions on the process in this video, uh, feel free to leave a comment and I'll get right back to you. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.